All right, so in this video, we're going to discuss how you describe the binding between an antibody and its ligand. And here we're referring to antibodies with a more general term, receptor. It turns out that there's a very general description of how receptors bind to their ligands, and we can describe it mathematically in order to predict the extent of binding for a given concentration of ligand that we've added. And this is a very useful description that enables us to predict what fraction of the, the binding is saturated. So we're going to walk through today how we come to that description and what its limitations are so that you always know whether you're working under the conditions uh, for, the, for that description to apply. I invite you to follow along on your worksheet. Uh, in the YouTube video, there's a link to the worksheet uh, and you can access it also through the Course Collab site. Uh, this will enable you to follow along in a very logical manner with the notes and there'll be points where you're asked to pause the video and work out the algebra on your own and then you can check your answer by continuing through the video. All right, so you may recall that we've been talking about the binding of a receptor to its ligand with particular rate constants, uh, K association and K dissociation, and then forming this complex uh, that we're referring to as RL, which is the bound state. And we defined the KD for this. You can pause and think about this for a moment uh, as uh, the equilibrium constant going in the reverse direction. So we have R times L over the concentration of the bound complex RL. Okay, and so that tells us at equilibrium the relative ratios of the unbound species to the bound species. So what we want to ask today is what fraction of uh, the available receptors would actually be bound for a given concentration of ligand and can we predict that? Okay, so we're first going to define what we call fractional occupancy, which is um, sometimes it's referred to as a variety of different variables. We're going to go with the variable small r. Um, sometimes you will also see this referred to as bound ligand, um, B sub L, depending on what text you're reading, okay? Um, and sometimes you'll even see it writ written as a y. Um, so a number of different variables depending on the text. But we're going to go with the small r. And so this is just the moles of ligand that are bound over the total moles of receptor that are available. Um, and we can break this down into variables akin to what we've been working with before, which are just concentrations by saying, well, this is just the amount of RL, the bound ligand, over the free receptor plus all of the bound receptor, okay? So the numerator there gives you the concentration of bound ligand and the denominator gives you the total concentration of receptor, okay? And so one thing to note here is uh, that here I've written concentration of R that we could further uh, denote specifically that's the free receptor. Um, as opposed to total receptor, okay? And it's really important that you keep straight, which those are, and so if they're not annotated, um, you usually would assume that that would be the free state, okay? Um, now notice, we don't usually know the free concentration of receptor. This is hard to measure. Um, and so we would really like to be able to define fractional occupancy in terms of variables that we actually can measure um, or, or that we can control. And so here we're going to try to work through uh, some substitutions into this equation to get it all into terms of variables that we can know. And so you can ask yourself, well, what do I know when I'm setting up um, a binding event? Well, often we might combine some known amount of ligand. So we would know the total ligand. That would be like if we're talking about antibody antigen binding, this is the antigen. So you might add that in. Um, you may know how much receptor you added um, depending, like if, if you're working in solution, then you would know how much you added. But if you just coded, for example, antibodies on a plate, you actually don't always know exactly what quantity of antibody did bind to the plate. We can only estimate that. And so we, we may or may not know the concentration 
uh, of total receptor. Um, we hope that we would know the KD. Um, and so, uh, but, but many of the other variables we don't know. Uh, RL, we don't know a priori, of course, because that is actually what we're probably measuring, um, or we're measuring some signal that is proportional to the amount of ligand that got bound, okay? Um, and so in your worksheet, if you're following along, um, you know, pause the video and, and see if you can identify which of these you would know and which you wouldn't. All right, so now the next step is we're going to try to get that, that equation for the amount of uh, fractional occupancy into terms that we can control. Okay, so we'd like to rewrite R in terms of um, only things that we know. And so specifically, we'd like to get it in terms of um, the, the total concentration of ligand and the KD. But that actually is hard to do uh, right away. So I'm going to get you to a middle step first. So let's rewrite R in terms of specifically the KD and the free ligand because um, it turns out that it's easier to get there, okay? And the way I want you to go about doing this is start with the definition of R that you had just above, and then take advantage of the definition of KD here, um, which we also had just above, and which you will know, um, you want to ask yourself, which L is it that's in this equation? Is it the free or is it total? Pause and think for a minute. And you might realize it's actually the free uh, species that is in there because um, only free ligand can bind to the receptor, um, at least the way that we're thinking about this with monovalent binding, okay? So, um, and this other one is also free receptor, all right? So those two are, are both free species. And then on the bottom, we have the bound species. So try this, pause the video, and try to work through the algebra, um, and then come back um, and, and see how do we get R just in terms of these two parameters. All right, so the first thing to note is our, to recall our definition of uh, the, the fractional occupancy R, which I've noted here, and then to notice one of the big terms that we're trying to get rid of is that RL term, and that that is a prominent uh, member of the definition of KD. So you can rearrange the KD equation to isolate RL, and then we're just going to plug it into this equation. All right, so if you needed that hint to get going, pause the video again, and now work through the algebra until you have a simple equation for R in terms of KD and the free L. All right, I'm gonna assume that you pause the video, so I'm gonna walk you through the solution. So here we're going to first um, just substitute in R, the, the, the equation that we've done for RL in both places that RL occurs, and then we rearrange by pulling KD out of that denominator of the numerator to make this more convenient to work with. Uh, and then you may look at this and ask, okay, how can I simplify? Well, I notice that there's R in both the numerator and in both parts of this fraction. So I'm going to pull out uh, both parts of both, I'm going to pull the R out of both parts of that denominator. Um, now I look at this and I see, oh wow, I can cancel that out. And so I'm going to cancel that out. Um, and that leaves me uh, with this awkward fraction, but now I see, okay, well now it's pretty simple to distribute that KD across both of these. And then I'll be able, now I have this term and I can cancel out uh, the two KDs as they appear. And that leaves me with this final quite simple equation. So if, if that was tough for you, please pause the video and go back and check your algebra. Um, once you're there, let's keep going. So this is what we call the Langmuir binding isotherm in terms of fractional occupancy of the, sorry, I can't write and talk at the same time, um, in terms of fractional occupancy of the receptor. All right, it's important to notice that this has L free in it. Um, not L total. And of course, what we would really much prefer to work with is L total because that was, you know, that's what you're going to dump in or pipette into your solution. Um, and so the way that we 
want to, to get to L total is really by making an approximation or an assumption. Um, and so we are going to assume, and this is a big deal, so I'll write it in red, that uh, the concentration L uh, we can, that which is really L free, right? We're going to assume that it's equal to L total, which is what we can pipette into the mixture. Um, and the way that we get away with assuming that is by setting um, the total concentration of the receptor so that it's much, much less than the KD of the interaction. Okay, so as long as your total concentration receptor is much less than the KD, then you get to assume that all of the, basically all of the L, sorry, all of the L is free. Okay, so that's the assumption that we get to make and it's only true when your receptor concentration is much less than the KD, okay? And actually in one of your homeworks, um, you're gonna get to derive why that is true and why it is safe to make that assumption, okay? Um, but, but for now, um, you can just believe me. All right, so that's a version of the Langmuir isotherm in terms of fractional occupancy. Sometimes it is useful to write it in terms of the concentration of um, the RL complex. And so we would really like to also be able to have an equation for this in terms of parameters that we know. So take a moment um, and try to rewrite uh, the Langmuir isotherm um, as an um, in, in this form, RL equals, um, and you can take advantage of the fact that we know this definition for R um, that we started with, okay? So go ahead and try this. So I'm gonna let you now include the term R total in your linear isotherm, okay? Because sometimes we do know that. So go ahead and try to rewrite your linear isotherm by using this relationship um, to get this back in terms of parameters like R, L, and K, D. Pause the video and give that a try and then come back. All right, so let's do this together. So what we're trying to do is combine uh, these elements that we have. So we know that R is equal to this bound complex concentration over the R total, which I'll write like this. And we know that it's also equal to uh, the equation that we had from our Langmuir isotherm. So we can do that. And then all that we really need to do here is, um, it's one simple step and that's to move the R total term up into the numerator of the Langmuir isotherm, and then we're done. So it's one step equation uh, manipulation. Okay, and so this is the Langmuir isotherm in terms of fraction of, of in terms of the bound complex, like the signal that you might get from that rather than fractional occupancy. Now you may notice that this equation has a form that is very similar to a form that we've seen before, and that's the Michaelis-Menten equation. All right, do you see the similarities between the format? So take advantage of that and then take a moment to uh, sketch out what you think the graph of RL versus L should look like, okay? And this would be the graph of the Langmuir isotherm. Uh, pause the video and try to sketch that and label where the KD and where our total show up on the graph. Come back when you're ready. All right, so I'll assume that you pause the video. So this should create a graph that looks very reminiscent of our classic michaelis menten shape, but now it's for binding. Um, so I'm going to put concentration L on the axis here, and I'm deliberately leaving that vague because it's either the free ligand uh, or it's the total ligand, depending on whether we've met that criteria about the total receptor concentration. Um, on the x-axis, I'm going to have my RL concentration, um, and so this should go up and then asymptotically approach the max, whoops, um, Sorry, it should go up and asymptotically approach that maximum, uh, that maximum concentration. Okay, um, where is KD on this plot? Well, it's going to be halfway to the total, um, and so we should come over and go down 
Um, and so then that's the KD, and, and that of course is in units of concentration of ligand, right? Um, so, okay, so this is one way to plot the linear isotherm. You may notice that all of the action that's happening at these low concentrations uh, of, of ligand is really hard to see here. Um, and so there's actually an alternate way of plotting this, which takes advantage of a log scale instead of linear scale um, concentration of ligand. And so here that would mean, you know, you're going from 10 to the minus 10, 10 to the minus 9, 10 to the minus 8, and so on, molar of, of uh, ligand. Um, and so now if we plot like this, it should actually come out as a sigmoidal curve, something like this. Um, and some nice curve shape here down there. All right, and so again, it still maxes out. This is still RL, and this is still um, going to max out at the total concentration of receptor that's available, but now it makes it a lot easier to see where your KD should go because it's halfway up that sigmoidal uh, slope. Um, and you can also really easily tell what's going on with the background, uh, which in the assay would show up down in this bottom region uh, down here. Okay, so, um, so this is a great way of plotting the Langmuir isotherm because it really makes it very clear um, that at exactly half of the available binding sites um, that we can get um, uh, the, the KD, um, and it also makes it very easy to see the relevant range of ligand concentrations. So well, the last bit of notes that I want to go over are how we can use this form of the plot uh, to be able to see what are the relevant uh, ligand concentrations to work over. So I'm actually going to sketch it again nice and big so that I have plenty of space um, to work with here, and I invite you to do the same. Um, and this time, I actually am going to plot it as if we had plotted uh, the fractional form of the equation. So as just little r um, instead of uh, the rl. Okay, and it turns out, of course, the shape of this will just be exactly the same, that nice sigmoidal shape. Of course, I drew it kind of weird. It should have like a symmetrically sigmoidal shape. Let's try again. So a nice symmetrically sigmoidal shape. Um, now, where does it max out? Ask yourself, where would fractional occupancy max out? Is it at a concentration unit? No, it should be at um, the fraction equals one. And then um, in a perfect world, it would go down to the fraction equals zero, although often if we're measuring some experimental metric, they'll be back. Okay, but this should ideally go down to zero. Um, and then the KD should show up at exactly r equals 0 0.5. All right, so now what's really cool here um, that we can take advantage of is uh, we can use this to really clearly determine um, what, the, what the relevant range of concentration is. All right, so where is all the action happening? Well, you may remember another curve that looks like this too, and that's pH titration, and you may have heard often that it's around the pKa plus or minus one to two pH units that you can actually get a transition. Well, this is the exact same situation. So um, if you go plus or minus tenfold of the KD, so here we're at 10 KD, here we're at 0 0.1 KD, um, then we're at now, uh, that here we're at 9% of all the binding has occurred at a tenth of the KD, and up here we're at 91%. So most of the binding is going to occur within tenfold of that KD. Um, and then to be absolutely sure, often people uh, will, will go out and they'll say, all right, within two logs of the KD, meaning a hundred of the KD or 0.01 of the KD, um, that's when almost all of the action will have happened here. 
All right, so within a hundredfold of the KD on either side from 0 0.1 to 100 X of the KD, we get from 1% to 99% of binding. So what this means is that if I hand you an antibody and I say it has an affinity of one nanomolar, what that means is that all the action for binding will occur between 0.01 nanomolar and 100 nanomolar of the antigen. And that if you give it um, a thousand nanomolar or more than that, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference at all because you would be up here in this saturated zone. Um, similarly, if you went to far less than 0.01 nanomolar, again, you wouldn't be able to see at all what was happening because you just wouldn't see any binding. So if you're interested in, say, an assay that can detect a particular concentration of ligand, you need to choose an antibody or a receptor that has an affinity that falls near the concentration range that you're interested in. All right, so one last question. This is a concept check, a self quiz, for example. Um, let's say that I give you um, a, a binding curve and I tell you um, that, that you know, it looks like this and that the KD is approximately one nanomolar. Um, what would be, just sketch for yourself, sketch that graph and then sketch what would it look like for a KD um, that has 10 times uh, or that represents 10 times lower affinity. So an antibody with 10 times lower affinity, where would its curve fall on this same graph? Sketch the graph. Pause the video, sketch the graph. So for 10 times lower affinity, where does the curve fall? All right, hopefully by now you've had time. And so what that would mean is that the KD is 10 times higher. Um, and so it should shift over by one log unit. Um, so here, uh, what, wherever our log scale is, it'll just shift over by one log unit and that should show up in just a moment. Okay, um, and so here we just shifted over to the right, okay? Um, and, but you've noticed that the slope stays the same. Uh, because I didn't change any of the other properties of the binding, just the center shifts over because my KD increased, okay? Um, and so that's it for today. So what we've gone over uh, here is um, the length, how Langmuir isotherms uh, can be described. And then uh, we went from there to how to derive the equation for the Langmuir isotherm, what the assumptions are under which the concentration um, of, of free ligand can be approximately equal to the total concentration of ligand. Uh, and then we re represented these two images um, of, of how to draw the Langmuir isotherm, both in terms of a linear scale and a log scale. And we talked about over what range of concentration of ligand can you actually detect uh, differences in the amount that is bound. All right, so uh, moving forward, we're going to move on to, in the next video, the kinetic description of binding. Here we've only been talking about equilibrium, so it's important to realize that so far we haven't talked at all about how fast binding occurs, only the extent to which uh, things are bound once you've reached equilibrium. So hopefully this was useful. Uh, make sure that your worksheet is completed because that will help formulate your notes for the day and I'll see you next time.